they're not going to leave any wealth behind. That's what they conquered for. And guess what they did with it, I told you. They went to Rome and built the Colosseum with it. That's right. They took the temple treasure and built the Colosseum. Nothing could be a, a more egregious turnaround than that. That they built a temple of death you know, a gladiatorial spectacle with animals and things for the entertainment, for blood sports to entertain people, to make them popular, uh, and to divert people's attention from any of the ills of the society with these events that they sponsored there. And they, they used it. The Flavians did this. Vespasian and his son Titus built it. And they did it on top of Nero's palace. Nero had games in a sort of naval uh, uh, lake that he had built. They drained that naval lake and put the Colosseum there. And they built all these, uh, you know, different causeways and places to hold animals and different elevators to bring things up and surprise the, uh, the people in the stands. And, and, and you all know what the Colosseum looks like. I wouldn't go to the Colosseum. I wouldn't honor it by even I wouldn't deign to, uh, to look at it because it's such a, what happened there is so disgusting and so, so low. And people go and rave about that place. It's like going to Auschwitz or someplace, saying that's a wonderful place. It is very impressive architecture, no doubt about it. Anyway, here it is. They took the booty and then the last day, so the, 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 the Yeter Ha'amim, the additional ones of the people. The peoples, to my mind, are the Herodians. The additional ones of the people are the Herodians. In any case, are, are, are the Romans. Its interpretation concerns the wicked priests, whom as a consequence the evil he did to the righteous teacher. And them. so uh, we know that when uh, James was brought up on these charges by Ananus, that he had also people with him. And it was because of what he did to them that God delivered him into the hands of his enemies to afflict him with torture and consume him with bitterness of soul because he condemned his elect. So the righteous teacher and the men of his council are God's elect. And the wicked priest destroyed them. And that's why they took vengeance on him. I don't know where you want to put this. 170 B.C. Judas Maccabee. Jonathan Maccabee, Simon Maccabee, uh, John Hyrconus, you now know all these people. Aristobulus, um, Aristobulus' two sons who were beheaded, and then now down into this period here that we're talking about. And I think the only period is the period we're talking about. The last priests of Jerusalem farming out taxes, worshiping their standards and adoring their weapons of war. You have one uh, having no pity on the fruit of the of, of the womb, killing the righteous, killing the wicked priest because of what he did to the righteous teacher, torturing him, desecrating his body. I don't know any other uh, 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 set of circumstances that would fit this. So most of my colleagues say, "Oh, well, we don't know what it applies to." Well, that's a cop out. We have enough material here and enough documents from the Spirit to make an intelligent assessment outside of uh, schoolboy mathematic, uh, you know, paleographic sequences, which is pathetic. All right, column 10, we'll finish this up. So many people are going to be cut off. Its interpretation concerns the House of Judgment. So House of Judgment is the last judgment which God will deliver in his judgment in the midst of many peoples and he will arraign them all there and condemn them in the midst and now in, in, in particular uh, he will arraign him there pardon me, that is the wicked priest in particular and condemn him in the midst so he's going to go to fire and hell he's going to hellfire for what he did and now building a city on blood and wearing out peoples for the sake of nothingness. That's Habakkuk 2.12. The interpretation of this passage 
Pastor Don DeVore, I have the Hebrew here too in case you doubt me, is about the spouter of lying. So we've swung again. The wicked priest is dead. We're not talking about the wicked priest anymore. We're now back to the spouter of lying. The one we've heard about in the Damascus document. The one we heard at the beginning here. And what did he do? He leads many astray. He doesn't justify them and he leads them astray. We know where in a trackless waste without a way. But now it's to build a worthless city upon blood. Now everyone says, oh, well, he's a Maccabean ruler building a worthless Jerusalem and he kills people to do it. Well, that's one way of looking at it. But another way to look at it is esoterically. He builds a worthless city, a community, upon the consumption of blood. The body and blood of Christ Jesus. And erects an assembly upon lying. He's a liar. Now, I'm not saying... Paul is a liar. They say a teacher like Paul is a liar. For the sake of his glory, and he does glory in things, that he glory, tiring out many. Many is the word for the rank and file of the community with a worthless service and instructing them in works of lying. And here's that amal again. So their amal, what we had at the beginning, uh, they will be saved by works and faith together. Amal and, and, and faith. So their ama will be of emptiness. There's the empty man thing from the James letter. Oh, empty man. And here it is. Their ama is empty. Empty of what? Soteriological content. What does soteriological mean? Salvationary concept, fancy, scholarly, uh, academic language for to be saved. So Greek. Soteriological means salvation. So you're not going to get saved from those kind of works because they're empty works. I think we're talking theology here. Others can think we're talking history. You make the decision. You're the jury. Okay. And instructed them in works of lying so their amma would count for nothing. And they will be brought to the same judgments of fire with which they insulted even perhaps blaspheme and vilify the elect of God. So one group hurling curses at the other. The Qumran group hurling uh, curses at this person who builds a worthless city on blood. Who vilify the elect of God. Anyway, the interpretation of the passage, the next one has to do with the spouter of lying, column 11. And it has something to do with water. <coughs> Now back to the wicked priest. A passage about giving your neighbor to drink. <coughs> drink this in remembrance of me. Uh, pouring out his fury on the drunk.